Hi everybody, and welcome to this video on scratch coding. The intent of, of this is to give you a bit of a background, just in general terms on how coding with scratch could work. We think that this will be something that's going to happen with our new grade nine D-Stream course in the fall. We don't really know what the coding component will look like at this point, but we've heard that some of our teachers are a little bit concerned about, about coding in general. And so the intent of these videos is to provide a little bit of an introduction and, and get you feeling a little bit more confident with it. This isn't something we want you to be intimidated by. Uh, scratch coding in general is pretty simplistic. Some of you might be remembering programming from either high school or from university courses. And scratch coding is made very intentionally to, to do this in a simplistic way. And that's gonna allow our, our grade nine students to still have some success in this. And again, the, the intent here is to, to take some of the pressure off, off of the teachers to, and realizing that this won't be as tricky as it might sound. So we're gonna walk you through the basics of what Scratch looks like today. And then I'm gonna create some other videos that will show you some examples of specifically how you might use coding in, in your grade nine math class. So to get started, you can find a Scratch program just by going to a, a Google search engine and typing in Scratch. And the very first link that comes up will take you to a website called scratch.mit.edu. And, and this is everything we're gonna need. So you can sign in, you can create an account, which will allow you to save files and everything. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about that just yet because all you need to do to actually start doing some coding is just hit this button over here that says start creating. When you do that, your screen's gonna pop up with a lot, there's a lot going on in the screen right away. Um, there's a little tutorial here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And I think I'm gonna turn my video off as well so you can see a little bit more of the screen. Now, the intent here is to walk you through the basics. Okay, so there's there's lots more to learn, but we're gonna show you some of the, the fundamentals here. On the right, there's a little cat here. This is called a sprite. And there's lots of different sprites that we can choose from. So you can go down here and select different sprites. They're just different characters or different objects that might appear on the screen. I can move him around and put him in different spots. You'll notice that the location here with an X and Y coordinate changes depending on where we put the sprite. I can make him disappear if I want to or turn him back on. We can even put different backgrounds on if we want to. Now over here on the left, this is where you're gonna see most of the control features. So this is what's gonna allow us to do different things with our sprite. So for example, we have motion. This is gonna allow our, our sprite to move. And I can drag it out here. This, this box here on the right, this is where everything's happening. So if I drag something out, this is now part of my, part of my program. But what's different for scratch coding compared to maybe the programming we're used to is everything here is done in blocks. So this is saying move 10 steps. So that's it, there's no syntax, there's no fancy uh, quotation marks or semicolons that need to be in the right spot. Everything's done very, very simplistically. And then the other part that we're probably gonna need just so you can see the basics here, I'm gonna go to events. Again, everything here on the left are the different blocks that we can choose. But here's a really important one. I'm gonna drag this out. It says when the flag is clicked. The flag is kind of like the, the start the program button. And what you'll notice, I think, is how these can connect. So if I slide this up and connect them, now these are gonna to work together. So when the flag is clicked, our sprite is gonna move 10 steps. There we go, you can see that he just moved a tiny bit. But maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger so you can see it more obviously. There we go. So when I click that, he moves 100 steps. So this is our control feature here. Now the nice part is, if I wanna get rid of something, I can just pull it apart. So I can pull these blocks apart. And if I don't want it anymore, I can just slide it back over here to the left and it's gone. A couple other features that you'll see, the control feature here, there's a, a few options that we'll probably use more often than others. So repeat, for example, this is something that we're now going to do this multiple times. So for example, we might ask him to move 10 times. We might ask him to turn and, and move. Lots of different things. For a, from a programming perspective, uh, repeat would be like a loop. So this is our repeat function. Another one here that we might like would be our if structures. So these are sort of controlling things. If something happens, then do what follows. 
These are called decision structures from our programming perspective. But again, everything is just done here in blocks. We have some sensing options. So we can, we can ask things. So I can say, I can ask my sprite to ask for user input like this. So he comes up and he asks my name and I can type in my response. So that works pretty nicely. And I can change this so I can ask for different things as we go. Other things that you'll notice here, uh, operators are gonna allow us to do some calculations. So we've got additions and divisions and so on. Uh, we even have uh, lots of fancy stuff here uh, if we wanted that can pull out particular letters from words and so on. Variables, we're probably gonna want for some calculations. And notice here, if I click on this make a variable button, I can even create my own variable. So I wanted maybe something called radius. So say we were making a program where we wanted to calculate the area of a circle. I could have the user input a number and store it in this particular variable. So we can create variables. The other thing that's gonna be helpful is there's, we're gonna want our sprite to be able to draw to do some drawing. So if you click on this blue button down here, we need to add something. So if you click on the blue button, this here will pop up and we're gonna click on pen. And when we click on pen, that adds a new feature to our code. And that's pretty helpful. So now we've got this pen feature that's gonna allow our sprite to draw things. So for example, I'm gonna move him back up here to the, to the left. And let's get things started again. So when clicked, and I want to turn my pen on. So I'm going to say, for this sprite, put your pen down. And then let's have him move a little bit. So we'll go back up to the motion. And we'll move, let's say, 50 steps. So now when I click this Go button, my pen is going to drop. So my sprite is going to draw. And he's going to move 50 steps. So it draws a little line there. So that pen feature is going to be helpful, especially when we do some uh, some coding around angles and polygons. We can make uh, we can make our sprite do some drawing. So that's a little bit of a preview of how this works. It covers some of the basics. Again, most of the features here are on the left. You're programming everything in blocks, and we're going to be putting different different code together to make our sprite do different things. So I'd encourage you to play around with it. There are a ton of different blocks available here that will allow you to do all sorts of things, many of which we'll never use. Um, but there's some there's some fun ones you can try, and, uh, and you can't go wrong. You can't break anything. You can't make something bad happen. Um, you just put different blocks in and, and see what happens for now. So again, hopefully this video helped just to give you that, that quick background image of what, what we're looking at from a scratch perspective. I don't, I hope it isn't intimidating. Um, we can, we can make some pretty simplistic programs with this using some some block coding that can do some pretty interesting things and that's that's the intent so stay tuned for some future videos where we we talk about some specific examples that we might try in our new grade nine class